Hey, welcome to the I2 Podcast. So excited to have another episode here and just love hearing the stories, love uh, just the inspiration that's going on with helping people understand and maximize the influence God's given them to impact the world around them. We get to sit down with amazing leaders in our city, but also around the country who are doing amazing things with their influence. And today I get the opportunity to sit down with just an amazing leader here in our community, in our city, Willie Barney with the Empowerment Network. Welcome, Willie, man. So good to have you. Oh, man, Josh, I'm honored. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you and uh, looking forward to the conversation and discussions, man. I appreciate everything you're doing. Continue to do your whole family, man. It's a blessing to be with you. Man, I, I appreciate it. It's, you know, we're, we're in this pandemic right now with the, the COVID-19 reality. And we were just talking earlier uh, just about how I think God positions people and organizations for such a time as this. And you guys are on the front line right here in, in the North Omaha community, partnering organizations, rallying organizations. I want to talk about that, but just for the listeners, can you just give us a, a big picture of what the Empowerment Network is all about and just how you guys got started? Yeah, man, it's been a lifelong calling, uh, Josh. It's all about purpose, walking in what God calls you to do. Yep. Uh, this started for me early in the years, goes way, way back and, and growing up in Mississippi the first seven years of my life and mm. seeing the disparity. Um, and I always talk about sometimes being on the bus or in the car going yeah. to we lived in a rural rural area going from rural Mississippi into Greenville, Mississippi. And you see plantation houses, you see shotgun houses mm. and typically a train track, a uh, river, a stream or something separate people by race, separate by income. Yeah. I'm seeing this as a young person, age seven. Mm. That, that had a huge impact imprint on my life and uh, moved from there to Iowa uh, and saw the other side uh, coming up. And But even wow. going through that and then going on through college and started traveling, I would see it in Chicago and Miami and New York and uh, West Coast. No matter where you went, there was always a separation point. So fast forward to being uh, recruited to come to Omaha and saw some of the same things right yep. away. And... Uh, that led to me working in a corporate environment for four years, left there to go work for my church uh, for a couple of years. And um, at that time, uh, Hurricane Katrina hit in okay. New Orleans. And it really led us, led me to really pray about how do we respond? How do we, wow. what are we doing as a nation to address the concerns of mm. those in poverty, those unemployed, if a crisis was to hit here, now think about that. Wow. If a crisis wow. was to hit here. Oh, man. How would we respond? Yep. Because they had sent people from New Orleans and most didn't have any type of transportation. They were trying to get to uh, get their medicine, getting to the VA or wherever yep. they needed to get to. So I found myself in the church van uh, mm. going to pick people up and uh, making sure they got to, you know, try to get some furniture, try to get a house. And it was all over the place. Wow. And here we are. Uh, how many years later now? Mm. Uh, were this potential, uh, well, this crisis that we're in, how are we responding? Right. But to directly to your, your question about the Empowerment Network, out of that, uh, about a year later after Katrina, uh, I started to get in my car and talk to people about what can we do if we work more collectively? Mm. Uh, can we move the dial? Can we create tr a tangible transformation in our city if we work in a more collective way? That was right. the genesis of the Empowerment Network which now 13, 14 years later is an organization. It's gone from a grassroots conversation, a, a tabletop conversation with my yep. wife in the kitchen to an organization that works collectively with many organizations and churches to really focus on moving the dial in our communities, whether that's education, yep. that's uh, employment with kids, how improving housing. And the real key though is identifying organizations and churches that are really good at what they do mm. And, and helping them do even more of that. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, we've grown from a grassroots conversation to an organization, 501c3, that is a backbone uh, organization and a collective impact model. Yep. So good. So good. I, I love just hearing your story and your journey. And you talk about just Hurricane Katrina and, and what that did. It's amazing to me. And, and we know we serve a God that can use every situation and circumstance. And how you're calling, and I, and I just think even in this season, callings can be birthed out of crisis, and it's in those crises that we start to ask questions, and and even just some of the questions you asked, my wife and I were having the same conversation last night. Man, if 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 we were to experience something like this again, or this situation gives us a glimpse of man, if we only had so much time, how would we shift things in our life? What would we focus on? What what are we doing now that maybe we would stop doing and start doing something different? 
And so I love how you you talked about that, how how that crisis really opened your eyes and just helped you get more clarity on the calling that God had on your life. And, and now, you know, years later, you personally are positioned in the calling that you're living out, but also you've built an organization that is positioned to respond in, in times of crisis. I mean, I think your organization, from what I've seen, has responded as well as anybody to, to really collaborate, engage organizations, and start to to meet some of the needs. Talk about just kind of what you guys are doing right now as an organization and how you've responded on the the immediate side. I just thank God. Uh, this this really goes way back to when I moved to Omaha, praying about coming in here and, and what, because initially we weren't coming. <laughs> right. But yeah, as we I mean, who wants to go it, to Omaha? <laughs> yeah, God said, hey, this is, you're supposed, there's something for you to do in Omaha. Wow. My wife and I talked about it. We prayed about it. We moved here. And Fast forward back to, you know, the work that we're doing as the Empowerment Network. He put in my spirit of village, rebuilding the village. Mm. And the village came back all the way to Mississippi. I know I'm keep wow. going back there, but no, it's in real. the village, people look out for each other. Yep. They help each other. They they grow food. If you can't grow corn, somebody else does. You you raise the chicken. You And then you put it together and you make sure that all we, somebody always has a plate, no matter yep. what happens. And that's so that's been the core of my life. I didn't realize it. Couldn't put it into those terms early on. But fast forward, it's really been about rebuilding the village. Mm. And so when we launched that back in 2006, 2007, it was how do you not try to take all of North Omaha at one time, but break it down into village areas. Yep. And so we created a map just around 30th and Parker, because at that time, 30th and Parker was the most violent corner in, the, in North Omaha going back years okay. with gun violence. And at yep. that time, there was a housing project there. And so we prayed. We stand, stood in the middle of 30th and Parker in the middle of the projects and prayed that there would be revival, wow. uh, uh, renovation. Uh, people would come together. And uh, a couple of years later, OHA agreed to tear down the projects, which made way for Highlander, which yep. made way for 75 North and rebuilding of that area. So that became Village One. Yep. Um, it didn't start with new buildings. It didn't start with coffee houses. It started with uh, the the church community coming outside and praying in the midst of the storm. Mm. And we created a, a village around it that has now new homes, uh, the ministry that uh, Tila Mickles and uh, and others are, are doing, Myron Pierce and others are not, they're no. rebuilding that village and continuing to work and bridge works in there. So there's m- many ministries that are doing work, but expanded from that one village to now 12 villages. Mm. And in each of those village areas, there are churches, parachurches, nonprofits yep. identified as partners. And the beautiful thing is we've been at this since 2007. Mm. So the foundation has been there and there've been some long-term partners, churches that have stayed with it for 12, 13 years, wow. which is then the foundation that when the call went out a week ago and said, Hey, uh, we want to re-engage others on this. We b- believe we have a platform and an infrastructure that we can utilize to not only continue to do the work that we, we've been doing, but this could be uh, the genesis of helping to respond to this coronavirus issue that we're facing directly right now. Yep. And I have to recognize uh, Kimra Snipes, who's on the school board, works in South Omaha and North Omaha. Mm. She called and said, hey, we're going to have a meeting at 8 a.m. on Zoom last Friday. Um, but it seems like rather than creating something new, why wouldn't we just build on what we already have? And right. She recommended using the village strategy. I mm. agreed. We had a quick call. Uh, Jonathan Chapman set up a Zoom call for us, man. And, and this week we've had 60 pastors and faith leaders on Zoom calls wow. organizing. Uh, Pastor Myron Pierce is doing a piece on food, um, technology. Jonathan's doing yep. his piece. Pastor Bruce is doing his piece. Uh, Bridge and Abide are tying in their piece with the lighthouses and yep. the neighborhood alliances are tied in. And so it, it's just amazing to see what God is doing. So, so good. You you talk a lot about the church and the role of, of the faith community. From the beginning, that was a focal point uh, for, for, for you and your organization. Why was that so important to you, and what role do you see the faith community playing when it comes to really uh, revitalizing or working to, to rebuild the village community? Man, this is the church, Josh. Yep. This is the church. You, you uh, your father, your mother— all of us back in the 2001, 2002, 2003, heaven on earth. What yep. does it mean to have the church mobilized, doing what the mm. church is supposed to do? 
inside the walls, outside the walls, yep. outside the salt shaker, all those things we talked about. This is the foundation. It's the platform of everything. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if God hadn't called me. To do. Mm, People ask right. all the time, you've been attacked. You've been talked about. You mm. stabbed in the back, knees cut out. Yep. Why are you even, you're not even from here. Why wow. do you keep doing this? Wow. I was like, I didn't call myself to this. Mm. I didn't call myself to Omaha, Nebraska. This wow. is a God-given thing. And even as cities come and visit and try to look at what we're doing collectively um, as a network, as a family, as a village in the city, sometimes yeah. they forget yeah. that at the center of this whole thing is God. Come on. This is a move of God. The church has a role. It has a leadership role. And what's amazing is um, even non-believers, even people of different faith, yep. they honor that. They mm. honor what's going on. So our 360 meetings, which are focused on reducing violence, we start with prayer. We end with prayer. Yep. And and it's amazing to see the partnership with the police department, the educators, the nonprofits. But at the forefront are pastors and faith leaders mm. that are leading the charge. And I don't think we can take that for granted. Uh, there have been times when the church has been left out of things. But here, yep. the church is, is front and center. And people are, are encouraging it and supporting it. Hmm. So that role of being like what you're doing with the lighthouses, people in the neighborhood helping to make tangible, fundamental change by building relationships with each other. Yeah. Um, this in crisis moments come opportunity. It's the opportunity for the church to be the church inside yep. the walls and outside the walls. So um, in each one of these villages, there are two to three churches identified as village champions. Yep. And they are leading and facilitating and bringing the groups together within their village to serve the people, to empower the people, to make sure they have information, they have the knowledge they need. And the critical piece of this, Josh, when I say empowerment, sometimes people misunderstand what I'm mm. saying. It's not giving someone power. It's helping them to realize that they've had the power within them the whole time. That's good. That's good. And, and that's a God-given mm. gift that got, that each one of us has through the Holy Spirit. So that's what yep. I believe in. Come on, you know, man. And, and then the church working together through that, each person celebrating, recognizing their gifts and strengths and talents, and then using that uh, to better their church, to better their community, to better their family. That's what it's all about to me. I've, I've heard stories uh, or a story where a foundation was going to consider giving some money to the Empowerment Network, but they asked you to take out prayer in what you're doing. And from what I've, I've heard, the decision was made that, you know, we can't take out prayer uh, because it's the foundation of what we're doing, even if it causes us to not receive some, some specific donations. Yeah, absolutely. We've had to walk. We don't talk about it a lot, but we've had yeah. to walk away from funding. We've had to talk about, you know, walk away from um, opportunities that we probably could have been there faster. Yeah. But in my spirit and what God has directed me is that this is a God led mm. initiative. It's a God led uh, collective. We work with people of all faiths. But at the center of it is is the faith that that we walk on and we stand on. And God has delivered. Sometimes it's taken longer to get there. Right. We could have gotten there quicker. Yeah. But I realize now that the foundation and the platform has to be true mm. to now we can use that platform and build. And others have now come to participate and brought their gifts and their talents and putting it together and doing it collectively and collab. I've never been more uh, passionate about mm. that, Josh. It, it just, it's true. God has revealed himself that you, you stay focused on the mission and yep. the passion and the calling I've given you. All of the other things will come into, into action. Uh, the network is based on scripture in, in the book of Joshua. Mm. And uh, when, when the, when Moses has, is, is, is gone and, uh, God is telling Joshua to uh, be, uh, be of good courage yep. you know, and strong and, and courageous. Mm. And there's a scripture in there that says that I will make your way prosperous and successful. Wow. And so when moments get tough and in, in a moment like this that we're in, I go back to the book of Joshua and reread that. That's uh, chapter one, one through nine. Mm. I will make your way prosperous and successful at the core of the network is that scripture that uh, do not turn to the left or to the right, meditate on my word both day and night. I will make your way prosperous and mm. successful. Wow. So, so powerful and such a powerful foundation. And it's amazing that when we live out of those convictions that God gives us, the fruit ultimately follows. You know, in, in times like this, I think especially as a leader, like you said, man, I've been stabbed in the back. I've been, you know, talked about, knees kicked out, legs kicked out from under me. What, what do you do personally? You got your faith. But what do you do personally to stay encouraged? How do you continue to keep stepping and live with the type of hope that allows you to keep moving in, in times of crisis? And man, it's that word. You know, I go back. God had me read uh, the book of Nehemiah over and over and over again. I had no idea why. Mm. I kept reading that book, the book of Joshua. That wow. gives me life. 
uh, the scripture that he planted in my spirit when I moved to Omaha. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added or given unto you. Mm. Um, so in those tough moments, it goes back to those key scriptures. Yep. Um, and the other part is family, man. You know, my mm. wife believes in it. She was there at the kitchen table with wow. tears praying about this. Um, even when I left a certain job and we didn't have income for six months and mm. she never said, man, you better go get a job. She said, okay, <laughs> God called us out here. He wow. will not you know, forsake us and believed and just kept believing. She's been along with me as partners kind of behind the scenes sometimes, but more and more God is bringing her out into the forefront on the businesses that we do. But having a, a partner, a life partner that loves God, loves you, loves your family. Uh, I can't say that enough. And then even kids, you know, they had to sacrifice with the time I've dedicated to other areas. But when we're together, we're mm. on a trip and they pour into it. They know what we're doing. They know why we're doing it. Wow. Um, it's just been amazing. You know, so God, family, you know, the impact of my mother, my grandmother, my aunts and uncles, yep. the prayer, the encouragement and people like yourself. Man, we don't see each other a whole lot. But right. every time you call, you're pouring into me, mm. uh, you know, your dad, your mother, those trips years ago yep. to Chicago for leadership. Mm. Uh, Dr. Samuel Chan, I can go down the yeah. list of resources and people that your your parents brought to the city to help us focus on purpose and mm. mission. And so that's the other thing I'll share with you is uh, through that process, understanding my purpose yeah. and why I'm on this earth. Mm. Pastor Watson, uh, former pastor at Salem yep. out in the East Coast now, he told me something years ago. He said, I know I'm 100 percent sure that I was put on this earth to preach and teach the gospel. Mm. Yep. And I stood in the back of that room. And I said, man, wow. one time, someday, I, before I leave this earth, I want to be 100% sure wow. that I'm doing what God called me to do. Wow. And it was mm. through that, through prayer, some tapes that my wife sent me, sent me even before yep. we were married from uh, Tony Evans about mm. no excuses and uh, spirit, mind, and body. Wow. In that order. Mm. We're not body, mind, and spirit. We are That's spirit, good. That's good. mind, and body, wow. which connected me to my ultimate purpose. Mm. Of uh, As I was praying about it, and I remember the day driving to work on 680 and it's like this light hit me and said uh build great communities through collaboration wow. and planning plant a seed of hope in the children wow. and help others turn their vision and dreams into solutions and results mm. those three areas of, of purpose for me help me stay focused even when at times of difficulty that's what i'm here for wow that's so that's so good. I mean, I don't care where you are if you're listening to this and you're still going after your purpose. I love what Pastor Watson said. He said, I know for a fact, 100 percent, this is what I'm called to do. That's when you know you're in your sweet spot and you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you're living out the calling that God has in your life. You talked about, you know, the cassettes that your wife gave from Tony Evans. Just for our listeners, you know, what is a cassette? No, <laughs> I love it, man. You're bringing me back to reality, man. Hey, I, I didn't take you all the way back to the eight. You track, didn't take it was, it was the iteration after the eight track. Hey, you know it's crazy. I remember listening to to music on cassettes and speaking <laughs> and, and and teaching and. But man, I, I love the, the the journey and story that God is telling through you. And that's why you live with such conviction. You know, you talked about Hurricane Katrina. We're talking about COVID nineteen right now. Our community, the North Omaha community doesn't have the same resources, opportunities. I mean, when, when crisis like this hits, it's hitting everybody, but there's a vulnerability in our community that is greater because of some of the challenges that we face. Can you talk a little bit about what some of those challenges are? And then how can the outside community help partner with us as we're trying to meet those needs? Yeah, and you said the right word. It's partnership. We yeah. believe in equal partnership. We believe yes. each person has something to contribute and to give. They have gifts and talents. It may not necessarily always be financial, yep. but they have capital. They have human capital, social capital, spiritual capital, mm -hmm. uh, mental capital. All of those things added together plus financial capital will help us to uh, make sure that people not only survive this crisis, but thrive in the midst of it and after it. Yep. And so but you're dealing with pockets of poverty, pockets of unemployment. Um, and the biggest need, obviously, right now is the more tangible things, food, shelter. Uh, making sure people are able to get their medicine. So uh, there there are, uh, I thank God for Dr. Cheryl Logan at the school district who's helped. She's been working on this for a month and a half. She mm. saw something uh, early on wow. that caused her to pull people together within the district. And they had a very, very detailed plan put together. So she's mobilized with the food bank to do certain distributions of food, but there's still yep. gaps. And so the church is working to fill those gaps. But we didn't just jump out there right away and say, uh, we're, we're going to do all this. 
we, let's go back and analyze, look at what's available right now, who's doing what. Uh, we don't have to replicate or duplicate what they're doing. Yeah. What role can we do? So like uh, Myron Pierce being able to deliver food to some people because they couldn't get out. They can't come to the food pantry. They can't go to the site. Yeah. So contributing to those churches um, that can help organize food pantry, like a Claire uh, Memorial with uh, Pastor Cabot. Mm-hmm. She's been doing food pantries for over a year. So uh, she already has operation in, in a third Saturday. Uh, Morning Star has one on the fourth Saturday. Mm. So let's feed into those. Let's not recreate that Salem Food Pantry over on, on Lake Street there. So we're going village by village and making sure that food is accessible in each yep. one of those village areas, whether through the food pantry, through the church. So if someone can give towards those uh, efforts, those churches that are providing leadership in that particular village, um, in addition to that, uh, we have the youth development agencies like Hope Center and others yep. um, that are strategically located to mobilize volunteers. So uh, I would say for those churches, maybe outside of North Omaha, tag into those churches that are leading the work, those parachurches that are leading the work, Bridge, yep. Hope Center, on down the line, uh, Compassion in Action. These are all groups that have ministries in place and know how to serve people. Yep. Um, so don't have to be recreated feed into those organizations that have been on the forefront on the grassroots level for years and decades. Um, they can help make sure the resources get to the right place. Yep. No, it's so good. We we just uh, connected recently with the uh, food bank, and we're going to be a distribution center uh, right here on the Better Together campus, and then we're receiving donations and actually able to distribute some through our lighthouse leaders, too, that are, are on the ground in those neighborhoods. And so excited for just all the collaboration, all the connections going on within our community. What would you say, because I feel like you're an expert when it comes to collaboration. What, what, what are some of the keys to collaboration? I, I, one of the things I love that you said, you know, we believe in mutual partnership. It's not just a transactional partnership. It's a transformational one where we're all impacted by it. But what would you say are some of the keys to just healthy, uh, powerful partnership? I think it starts there, uh, Josh. It's first of all, understanding that each person is full of life, is full of uh, gifts and talents and honoring that, uh, not coming over the top of them, but coming as equal partners. I think that's the center point for the whole thing, because once you realize that whoever you're sitting across the table for has a uh, purpose, has gifts, has yeah. talents and strengths given to them, and you honor that, you respect that, you have that level of communication, that's the foundation. Because collaboration is easy to write down on paper. It's easy to say. Mm. It's more difficult to stay at the table. And we talk about this sometimes. You may have 10 issues and you disagree on nine of them. Um, and okay, if I can agree with you on 10, let's work on 10. Let's focus on that one first. Good. And, and, and because it's easy to fall out. It's easy to walk away from the table. It's easy to be negative. It's easy to find fault. But I'm trying to go back to our roots that says we're going to be positive. We're going to be proactive and we're going to build partnerships. Those three fundamental pieces keep it together. So if we keep that at the forefront, even when we're tempted to fall out, uh, tempted to walk away from the table, yep. something keeps pulling me back. And I may even have to leave the table for a minute. But I'll just there's we always make room for you if you want to come back mm. and, and we'll come and get you if we need to. But um, we, we need you at the table. We need your gifts and talents at the table. So uh, that's what collaboration collective work is meant for us is honoring the gifts of each person. We don't do it perfect. We don't always do it right. You know, we make mistakes, but we stay at the table and we keep moving forward regardless. And one of the things we committed to is if we have a meeting and 100 people show up, great. If the next week we have yep. the same meeting and three people show up great we're gonna have to keep on moving mm. but those three let's keep it moving and yeah. with or without funding yeah we have to be committed to this mission and at, at some point the mission will attract the dollars and, mm. and the other parts of it but if we stay focused on the mission and the work and and we don't always have to take time to tell the story let the, yep. let the work speak for us mm. and over time uh, that's what god has honored come on man well I, I, i've been able to watch that over the years whether there's 100 people three people. You guys have been faithful. You've been consistent. You, I mean, Miss Vicki uh, Quates Ferris, who's just oh, man. phenomenal. Man. I mean, yes. you, you've you got an incredible team of people that you've built. You're, you're such a hope-filled leader, too. You're easy to work with, easy to collaborate with. Just really, really appreciate just all your leadership. I'm talking with Willie Barney, leader of Empowerment Network and 
it's been so fun talking about just your calling, talking about how that calling is birthed out of the convictions that you've lived by, collaboration, which you guys do an incredible job of partnering and working with other individuals and organizations, and then the, the community impact that you guys are having, uh, not just during this time of crisis, but even before uh, we, we got to this place of crisis and collaborating and, and seeing our community continue to grow and thrive. Willie, if people are listening and they want to be a part of the Empowerment Network, they want to join what's happening, how can they get connected and hear more information? Yeah, absolutely. They can go to our website, empoweromaha.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, Empowerment Network uh, on Facebook. We're on Twitter. I think the quickest way is to get to us on empoweromaha.com yep. or on Facebook. Uh, we keep that Facebook updated on a daily basis, two or three posts as far as information about the responses. But even before that, what you said, uh, Josh, is this is an ongoing, proactive. It's not just in a time of crisis. Yep. We're able to use the platform in time of crisis. But mm -hmm. what's made it different is even when there wasn't a crisis, we were still working, still building collaborations. Yes. Well over 500 organizations, uh, you know, mm. over 100 ministries, you know. Uh, continuous work at the at the top level, at the grassroot level, neighborhood level, um, all of that working collectively. And we've always tried to stay focused on that. I really appreciate you recognizing Vicki Quates Ferris has been with us for over 10 years Amazing. as a linchpin, as a mm. glue for it. And then we have new players like Ashe Connor and mm. Jonathan Chapman and, and uh, Monique and Ricky and yep. others. And then all of those partners you know, from the Urban League to mm. on across the board. Well, you know, there's so many dimensions that are doing good work um, and aligning and collaborating. And that's the big thing. We're aligning our efforts. Yep. Nobody reports to me. Mm. <laughs> I don't report to them. But equally, yep. we realize the value that we have when we pull together. So good. So good. Why, well, man, can't thank you enough for taking the time, especially during this time of, of crisis. I hope people listening will jump on board, go to the website, get more information. Any final words you want to share with people just during this time of crisis or just when it comes to their role in their communities? Yeah, the scripture that God is just putting, putting in my spirit over and over in is God did not give us a spirit of fear, mm. but a power, love and a sound mind. Yep. Uh, last week, I just posted it on my own Facebook and just broke it down. Power. God has all power. He has all authority. Even mm. in times like this, uh, we need to love each other. We need to love our neighbor. We need to put it into motion. And then we need to have a sound mind. So we walk in faith, but we also walk with wisdom. So mm. when people say that we need a social distancing, we need social distancing. Yeah. We need to bring this curve down because we don't want to overwhelm our hospital system. Mm. So we have to have discipline about that. And the church has to lead that. We have to be an example of that. And uh, But I believe uh, supernaturally, even in the midst of this worldwide crisis that's going on, God is lifting up the church and leaders yep. to participate and, and really be at the forefront of solving this. But even beyond this, what do we really do about some of the long term issues that have been in our communities for a long time, mm -hmm. economically, spiritually, socially on down the line? The church is in position to be the church and to help lead through this. Come on, man. Such a powerful word. Well, seriously. Love you, your team, so grateful for you and the work that you're doing. And just, man, praying over you guys that God would continue to use you powerfully during this time and beyond. Thanks for taking the time. I, I love that with technology, our social distance didn't keep us from spending some time together and just having this great conversation. Yeah, I honor you, Josh, and your work on the ground at the at the pastoral level, at the community citywide level. Mm. God is using you in a mighty way, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep answering your call, walking your call. I pray for you and your family. Uh, just continue to do what you're doing. Man, I appreciate it. Well, thanks. Thanks, Willie. Well, hey, thank you for listening. We, uh, you know, all of our podcasts, all of our episodes you can find on anywhere where uh, podcasts are on any platform. You can also go to joshdotzler.com or abideomaha.org on the Influence to Impact tab. You can find this episode and all our other episodes. We say it all the time. You don't have to do everything, but God has gifted you to do something. Use your influence and to impact the world around you in whatever that looks like. We know that God is using us every single day.